This is the chronicle of a possible future for humanity based on real data. Solar observatories in orbit and ground stations detect a new sunspot in the sun's equatorial region. The Solar Weather Prediction Center of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the United States tracks the evolution of the sunspot as the star rotates on its axis. An X-class solar flare erupts. It is not directed at Earth. Its magnitude is large, but not uncommon. Solar storms of varying magnitudes continue to occur day after day. Solar activity is becoming increasingly violent and unstable. Anoi loses track of the sunspot's evolution for several days due to issues with one of its space-based instruments, but astrophysicists continue to detect eruptions using other tools. When they finally observe the sunspot again, it has grown to the size of 10 Earths. A massive loop of plasma begins to form on its surface. Artificial intelligence prediction models confirm that an X-class solar storm will erupt within hours, heading toward Earth. They cannot determine its exact strength with certainty, but they fear it will be dangerous. The plasma loop spans several hundred thousand kilometers. It is the largest ever observed. At this moment, it is pointing almost directly at Earth. Scientists sound the alarm. Data suggests the storm could be larger than the one observed in 2012, surpassing the power of the Carrington event of 1859. It could be a Miyaki event, a phenomenon that occurs once every 500 to 1000 years, although recent studies mention a smaller time frame is possible. Anoe warns satellite operators, data centers, and power grids that they may face a catastrophic event. Some data centers begin to shut down, a complex process that takes several hours. Thousands of internet services stop functioning. Power company engineers consider implementing controlled blackouts to mitigate the potential effects of the storm associated with the powerful super flare. Their executives debate the impact on consumption and the chaos a widespread blackout could bring to their businesses. Neither the White House nor the European Union decides to order a widespread blackout. There is also no established mechanism to execute such an order. NOE's warning is picked up by news agencies and some specialized websites and YouTube channels like mine, the Dobsonian Power Channel. Major media outlets relegate it to their science pages. Meanwhile, on the sun, the tension of the accumulated energy breaks the plasma loop, unleashing an unprecedented eruption in the modern record of solar activity. A tongue of plasma begins to grow at thousands of kilometers per second. It's a massive coronal mass ejection headed to the Earth. Space and ground-based observatories detect the super eruption as a fluid and a surge of energy and plasma. The massive emission of X-rays and gamma rays from the X-flare pushes the large mass of protons in the solar wind, accelerating it. These high-energy particles violently penetrate Earth's atmosphere and reach the surface, as they did approximately 12,000 years ago. The last solar storm of this magnitude was recorded by paleoclimatologists in polar ice cores. The intensity of the radiation bombardment is so great on the side of Earth facing the sun that data centers, personal computers, and mobile phones begin to fail as high-energy particles collide with electrons in processors and storage units. Many shut down. Servers in banks, hospitals, and other civilian data centers become corrupted and unusable. Multiple civilian satellites experience similar failures, cutting off communication with their control centers. GPS remains active thanks to its military shielding. The crew of the International Space Station performs an emergency evacuation. On the Sun, the plasma tongue is so large it could engulf 400 Earths. A massive coronal mass ejection heads directly toward our planet at nearly 3,000 kilometers per second. No emergency warning is issued recommending the disconnection of power grids. The ejection reaches Earth's atmosphere in less than 24 hours. The shock wave of the plasma brutally compresses the magnetic field into a long tail that eventually bursts when it can no longer contain the accumulated energy. The energy ionizes the atmosphere, and auroras illuminate the entire planet as if it were daytime. 
A powerful geomagnetic electric field spreads across the Earth's surface, creating a gigantic direct current that flows into transformers through their ground connections, overloading high-voltage grids worldwide. High-voltage transformers begin to explode and catch fire, even those disconnected from the grid. As predicted in Pentagon analyses published a few years earlier, the damage renders power distribution networks useless worldwide. At sea, the repeater stations of the global network of transoceanic communication cables suffer the same fate as the transformers. The global internet network collapses. In space, only a few military-shielded communication satellites remain operational. Civilian GPS receivers stop working. The intense geomagnetic activity affects other defense systems, compromising the early warning capabilities of nuclear powers. But the biggest problem is the power grid. Its total collapse triggers a cascading failure of all infrastructures without exception. Multiple airplane accidents occur worldwide. Many planes in flight suffer damage to their electronic systems, losing navigation and communication capabilities. Major air traffic control centers, landing systems, and radars continue to function thanks to diesel-powered emergency generators. Few planes can use them. Hospitals with emergency systems have been operating for several minutes solely on generators. Others stop functioning because their generators have been rendered useless by the storm. Thousands of operating rooms have to cancel surgeries, and many refrigerators storing blood plasma or medications stop working. The same happens in other critical infrastructures. Some generators keep potable water distribution systems running in large cities, and the pumps that prevent coastal cities like New York or Amsterdam from flooding. Communication networks, including cell towers and cable internet providers, stop functioning. Power plants suffer severe damage and remain disconnected from the grid. Following standard safety protocols, nuclear power plants begin to shut down their reactors. The storm also renders hundreds of thousands of wind turbines, solar panels, and hydroelectric generators useless. Without electricity, refrigerators stop cooling in homes worldwide. Televisions, computers, and mobile phones suffer damage to their electronic systems. Only old battery-powered radios can pick up emergency signals warning of a widespread blackout. Police work with firefighters and other emergency services to handle electrical substation fires and other accidents. At this moment, most people witness the event with a mix of astonishment, contained fear, and fascination. In the sky, the auroras remain spectacular as solar plasma continues to reach Earth. Most large generators begin to fail after eight hours when their fuel runs out. Suppliers cannot deliver more fuel because there is no electricity to operate the pumps at fuel depots. One by one, hospitals worldwide lose power. Blood plasma and any medication requiring refrigeration begin to spoil. Gradually, emergency services collapse. Operating rooms cannot be used and vital electronic systems in intensive care units stop functioning. Hundreds of thousands of critically ill or ventilator-dependent patients die worldwide. If electricity is not restored soon, approximately 2 million people relying on dialysis machines for various illnesses will follow shortly. Emergency personnel can no longer use defibrillators for cardiac resuscitation or any other powered equipment. Water distribution systems stop functioning, leaving billions without potable water. Only those who have stored water in bathtubs, buckets, or bottles will have reserves for a few more days, toilets also become unusable, and wastewater treatment systems halt. Panic spreads in cities across the planet. Local governments communicate using loudspeakers and urge calm. Refrigerators have been without power for over a day, and fresh food rots in warm and temperate regions. Millions of people rush to supermarkets to stock up on dry or canned food. With all electronic systems down, cash registers and card terminals do not work. The only form of payment is cash. Robberies and looting begin. On a large scale, most systems for the industrial distribution of food have been inoperative for hours. 
Millions of tons of vegetables, fruit, milk, fish, and meat rot in refrigerated warehouses with no means of distribution. All international transport routes have been shut down, electronic payments cannot be made, and the failure of computer control systems and GPS prevents any logistical operations. Power companies worldwide attempt to restore supply, but the vast majority of large transformers cannot be repaired. New units are needed. Before the eruption, the lead time for ordering a high-voltage transformer was about two years. Now it is impossible to obtain one. Many of the factories are in China, which has closed its borders and declared martial law. Other producing countries do the same. Experts estimate that, in the best-case scenario, it could take over a decade before power grids begin to recover. Violence increases. The situation overwhelms local law enforcement worldwide. With supermarkets emptied, looting of large warehouses becomes widespread. Panic grips cities globally. Thousands of people, especially the elderly and the weakest, in outbreaks of violence. Governments worldwide deploy military forces in urban centers. Communications are conducted using old radio equipment. Emergency rations and potable water are distributed. In rural areas, refugee camps are set up for those fleeing the cities. The escalation of violence continues unchecked. Anarchy reigns in urban areas. Major hospitals are overwhelmed. The flow of people escaping cities to rural zones intensifies. Without information about the long-term collapse, many others remain in their homes, waiting futilely for a quick solution. In rural areas, the situation is better. In smaller communities where people have their own means of production, the impact of the widespread blackout is less severe than in cities. Life comes to a halt and reverts to a pre-industrial rhythm. It is a relative peace that will not last long. Mass migration from urban areas will lead to multiple conflicts in the coming weeks and months. In just three days, the collapse of the global energy grid has brought down industrial civilization and the information age. The auroras are no longer visible in the sky. Nearly all power grids worldwide are down, and the production of new high-voltage transformers is extremely slow. China keeps its borders closed and reserves all production for domestic installation. U.S. power companies, now under government control, have managed to install some reserve units, but major cities like New York or Los Angeles remain dark and abandoned, like most metropolises worldwide. The situation in all Western countries is dire, especially in large cities. Over the past two years, mortality rates have skyrocketed due to the lack of hospitals and the collapse of the pharmaceutical industry. Hundreds of millions of urban dwellers have died from infections and diseases caused by the lack of medicine, food, and clean water. The rest of the industries remain paralyzed. The few surviving technological facilities that withstood the storm stopped functioning due to the inability to receive replacement parts for repairs. This also affects military and security forces, whose operational capacity diminishes drastically. State structures have weakened, and in some countries, they've almost completely disappeared, while others, like China, maintain precarious control in certain areas. The population is left to fend for itself. Hundreds of millions of people organize themselves in rural areas, where conflicts over resources become commonplace. As experts warned years ago, civilization remains submerged in chaos. Decades will pass before recovery begins and a new world order emerges.